Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this breaking news. The hour is late and the situation is grave. We keep receiving angry reports and comments about the latest Farlight 84 version 2.2 patch. In this patch, some of the changes that were made have caused another wave of people leaving the game. The changes include but are not limited to respawn item removal, FPS drops and lag issues, reduced FOV, slow down upon getting shot and so many bugs. It seems like the entire game is changing and we are not entirely sure if it's for the best. We are now getting to a point where the developers will seriously have to question their work and listen to the feedback of the community. At this point, it will be a do or die situation because if they don't do anything, the game could die. So, what do you think about the new patch? <laughs> I'm too sad. <laughs> the game is not like before. <laughs> okay, that was a bit dramatic, but let's actually have a serious talk about the state of Farlight 84 and what the future holds. We have another wave of people leaving the game, and this is really, really hurting the game more than most people realize. Let's paint a picture of where we came from before and where we are now. So if you have a look at the global launch, we had a lot of players playing the game. We had 33,000 Concord players and the month after that, 41,000 Concord players on Steam alone. That is huge, huge numbers and naturally the, the game will decline after such a big peak. But a few months ago in December 2023, we actually had an increase of players by 7%. We had about 20,000 people playing the game at the same time on Steam alone. That is huge, huge numbers for Steam. And the months that follow after that, then literally, you can just see what's happened. 14% in decline in January because it's a new year and after the Christmas break, people get busy. But after that, you can see 47% of the players almost quit. This is when the Jetpack update happened. This is Steam alone and this is really, really big. After that, we are going down to 16% and in the past 30 days, minus 24%. Now, if you look at the actual concurrent players, we went from 20,000 to 16,000 to 9,000. 7,000, 5,000, and if you look at the past two weeks, that number has gone even more down. Because in the past two weeks, nowadays when you play the game, there is only two to 3,000 concurrent players online, and that is on a global base on Steam. That is not even per region. These numbers are Steam alone, by the way. For mobile, I imagine the decline and loss of players is even bigger. And we can talk about numbers all we want, but how can this be fixed in the future? Before I can even try and find an answer to this question, I really want to try to understand what the developer team wants to do with this game. Back at the jetpack change, I could kind of understand where they wanted to go with the game. And looking back, I can agree that the jetpack mechanic took a lot of key gameplay away from the hero shooter aspect of the game. Whenever someone used their ultimate or their ability, you would just jetpack away and the abilities were not as powerful as they should be. We then struggled so much for movement and they added the jet slide and for me, this was a really good step into the right direction. They gave us an amazing patch and Farlight 84 was fun to play. So many people would play so many different heroes because the game felt somewhat balanced. On top of that, they added a few amazing new options in the game like the FOV change, more zip lines, more cover, and you really had ways to play around heroes and the environment. Now, let's fast forward this to the patch that we recently got and why so many people are leaving. They completely removed respawners, which at first they said it would just be nerfed, right? First time you die, no problem. Just wait 60 seconds and you will come back. But somehow someone decided that they wanted to remove this mechanic entirely. And this actually caused a series of problems. This to me looked like someone made this decision without actually thinking about the consequences. And to prove my point, on patch day, we did not have respawn capsules on Sunset City or Lantern. And also, you would not spawn back with any guns at all. These things were changed in hotfixes after. So yeah, a rush decision with a bad outcome. Let me tell you guys why else this change is really really bad. Lobbies die very very fast. After the first zone closes, most lobbies only have 15 to 20 players. If you drop and your team gets killed fast, you go back to a lobby instantly. Very frustrating, especially if the queue times are longer than usual. It also discourages the idea of hot drops or hot zones completely. It makes the solo queue experience very very bad, especially if your teammates are bad at the game. It's not forgiving at all. And speaking of random teammates, they also very often just quit the game after they die, instead of waiting to do rest. In this same patch, they also made it so that when you get shot at, you also get slowed down. Let's play a fragment of the What's Next video of why they made this change. In this update, we're introducing a new mechanism of universal damage slowdown. 
Now, being attacked by enemies will result in a temporary reduction in movement speed. Now you can aim more accurately with less pressure in the battles. The game we were playing before patch day felt completely different the next day. So why are they making these changes? I have been thinking about this a lot and the only reason that I can think of is this. They are making the game a lot slower like other battle royales. You only have one life so you are pretty much forced to loot up and play safe. Hot drops or purple loot zones are absolutely useless. As a matter of fact, the hot zones don't give anything good right now. It used to give you blue weapons and back in the jetpack days it would give you a guaranteed purple armor. Oh and you can't hit your shots? No problem, just hit one bullet and then your target will get slowed. Do you see the pattern here? They are making the game more accessible and newbie friendly for newer players, so that when new players come to play the game, they will stick around for longer. But while they are doing this, they are actually killing the core player base and they are pushing away the diehard fans of this game. I think the development team has really, really dropped the ball when it comes to these changes. Even if newer players have a better experience when they start out playing the game, I don't think they will stick around for the long term, especially with a player base that is declining day by day and the queue times are getting longer and longer. Unless their goal is to lure new players in and cash grab from that, I don't see how they are actually building a more sustainable game. The developers need to somehow find a good middle ground to keep new players in while still keeping the game competitive for the already existing player base. Because if they keep killing the player base like this, then who are the new players going to play against eventually? They will get bored of playing against bots and move on to other games. It's time to seriously reconsider on how to keep new players engaged in the game without the cost of sacrificing your loyal players and fans. This is do or die. Do something or the game will die, and that is the hard reality of it. As for my future in Farlight 84, I will be taking a short break as the recent patch really felt like a stab in the heart and the changes really don't sit right with me. I'm really struggling to enjoy this game with this many bugs, bot lobbies, and also so many cheaters lately. I really hope the developers consider the feedback we have given them because so far I feel like it has fallen on deaf ears. Anyways, this is not goodbye, but I'll be back soon and I really hope I can enjoy the game again. This is Lights, over and out.